We've been looking at the fact that the Christian life is a race. It's something that we pursue. When we give our life to Jesus Christ, we make a commitment, and that's a good commitment. But the Christian life doesn't end at the commitment level when Christ becomes our Lord. We have to then run the race and pursue the path that God has given to us. And that's what Hebrews chapter 12, 14, and 15 talks about. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Normally in life, we achieve the things we pursue. When you pursue material things, you will achieve material things. If you pursue spiritual things, you will achieve spiritual things. So the things that we run after, the things that we pursue, are the things that become our life's achievement. So here the Bible tells us what we should be pursuing as Christians. First, it says that we must pursue peace. That means that when we become Christians, having peace and living in peace with people becomes a very important consideration. You know, all Christians understand walking in love is the mark of our Christian faith, that when we know Jesus as Lord, we must walk in love. Sadly, many of us are not able to walk in love. In fact, we're not able to walk in love even with people in our, in our church and, and, and people in our families. And sometimes we allow bitterness to come into our relationships and the bitterness then poisons all our relationships. So the passage says we must pursue peace and we must be careful not to allow bitterness to take root in our lives. So you are a Christian, you're committed to the Lord, pursue peace. Make it like a race. See it as something that you, you have to endeavor and, and work hard to attain. Having peace with people is not always easy, but it's doable. The Christian life commands us to pursue peace with people. And then it tells us, in addition to peace, we must also pursue holiness. That means we must pursue a life that is in alignment with God's will. Uh, that doesn't mean that we develop a holier-than-thou attitude. You know, there are Christians who have a chip on their shoulder. They think they are higher than everybody. Everybody is a rotten sinner. They are the only righteous ones, and they go condemning people and accusing people and, and, and throwing guilt on people. That's not what it is. Pursuing holiness is not against people. It's for ourselves. We must individually pursue holiness. And holiness simply means living the life that God wants us to live. And the Bible then tells us that when we pursue holiness, we will see God. We will experience him. We will experience his power. You know, there are many times we want God to answer our prayers. We want to see the supernatural power of God. We want to see the goodness of the Lord. We want to see miracles happen in our lives. Well, the Bible tells us if we pursue holiness, we will see God. But if we don't, then we will not see God. That does not mean that God is not in our lives, that we are not Christians. It simply means you don't see the manifestation of his grace, of his power, of his glory in our lives. So if you want to see spiritual manifestation, divine manifestation, you want to see the power of God, then the scripture tells us pursue holiness. We must separate ourselves from that which is unholy and we must dedicate our lives to the service of the Lord. Every day of our lives, we must remember as Christians, we belong to God. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to God. We live for him and we honor him with our choices and our decisions. And as we do that, we see his work in our lives. We see his power at work in our lives. We see his goodness in our lives. And so, as you run the Christian race, two things to pursue. Pursue peace and pursue holiness. Let us pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, you have called me to peace and holiness. 
help me to exhibit your glory in my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I will see you again tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mensah Otterbill. Shalom, peace, and life to you.